Hello and welcome to part two of getting serious about my series. Uh, I just had a timer go off on my phone which cut the recording and I do not have the time to re-record what I've already done because my recording and filming time is limited so we're just gonna go with it. So cheers chatterers, chaos, embrace it. So I have been talking about Rick by Alex Gino, I've now completed the Melissa and Rick duology. So there is a huge umbrella uh, so yes, so if you haven't seen the first video, please go and check that out where I introduce this video and explain what's happening and talk a little bit about Rick. Then come back and carry on. So there is an umbrella. Um, yes, yeah, so there's like an, um, there's an umbrella for all sorts of different um, characters in here. Um, and so they all, you learn about all different types of people in there. We have non-binary characters, we have trans characters, um, very, very different um, people that make up this group and it also shows a lot about how you might feel uncomfortable with bullying behaviour but how you also might be worried about being bullied yourself it kind of really truthfully looks into that idea it also looks into the idea of toxic friendship and you shouldn't have to hide who you are from people and you should be with people who make you feel good and not people who make you feel uncomfortable so I think all of that is really well explored. There's also a beautiful relationship between Rick and his granddad. I felt quite confused at the beginning about how everyone loves this granddad, but they don't know him that well and they go and visit him individually and he's really quiet family gatherings. They didn't quite understand how all of that was a thing. But the more I found about the character, I suppose it did make more sense. Um, so there was a really lovely bond between Rick and his granddad as they realised they both enjoyed the same um, sort of like the book version of I think Star Trek it's like very nerdy and geeky and they love geeking out about it and it's really adorable you also find out about his granddad as well and his granddad becomes a person that Rick feels able to be the most open and honest about both with the kind of the toxic friendship and with his own identity so very much enjoyed one series down so I have also now finished the Sorcerer Royale duology by Zen Cho I love this. I love it so much. I love Zen Cho's writing. And it is absolutely, as it says on the cover, Jane Austen meets Fairyland. We have the Regency writing, we have the witticisms, we have this Regency world, but bigotists are challenged. We have characters that are of a different skin colour, that don't necessarily have their whole heritage from this country. Um, and that is explored and looked at. We also have misogynism kind of taken out into the open as well. Um, so the sorcerer, the first book, um, Sorcerer to the Crown, the main character is Prunella, who I absolutely adore. She is one of my favourite characters ever in literature. We do see her again in The True Queen um, as, um, I'm not going to say because I don't want to spoil stuff, but we do see her again in The True Queen. Um, but we also are mainly following another character whose name I've totally forgotten, Muna. So Muna and her sister Sakti. So we are following their story. We meet some of our favourite characters that we um, met in the first book as well. Some don't get such a big look in. We, um, we don't get to spend so much time with um, another protagonist from this book. Um, but we do get more time in Fairyland in this one and kind of learn more about the world. I did really enjoy the characters in this. Um, there is a... Uh, um, a very mild subplot of a relationship in here um and there's it's more kind of like the intrigue of the fairy world and a mystery that's being explored in this one but we still have the same wonderful witticisms that we did in the first but we don't have as much prunella but i absolutely love this series and i definitely feel it's one where there's not an overarching plot to it you can just enjoy more kind of installments of of different characters in this world. So I would definitely absolutely be so excited if Zen Cho chose to write another book within this world. It would be so much fun. And my next series that I've now completed is my reread of the Ink World trilogy. So we have the first book, Ink Heart, which I think is the most well known, and that one is my favourite one. We then have Ink Spell, which I read in but somewhere between January to April and then Ink Death which I read in July. So this was a reread. I remembered Ink Heart very well. Bits of Ink Spell, only a small amount of Ink Death. So it was really fun to kind of read Ink Death and um, 
find out what happened. What was the end game within this trilogy? Um, this is very dark middle grade. It's very dark. Um, it's a very dark, cruel world and there's dark, depressing characters. There is some lightness, but not as much as you would expect in a middle grade fantasy series. Um, and I think for that reason, I didn't love it as much. I think when I read it the first time, I hadn't read, I wasn't as well, well read. I think it was my early 20s and I just hadn't read as much. So I absolutely adored this series and thought it was fantastic. It still is fantastic. But in terms of my favourite series, it doesn't quite hold up there. Inkheart does. Inkheart, I will love to the end of time because I really enjoy that kind of appreciation of books. It's very much like book love in here and that just warms my heart. And when I read this, it just... I was in the same place, it ticked all the boxes, this wonderful nostalgia, and I just loved it. And I really enjoyed the story in here as well. Um, these two have a different feel because you do go into the fantasy world in this one. So it is um, your kind of classic fantasy. It's kind of medieval. There's kings, there's horses, there's knights, there's princesses. And then there's sort of like sort of smaller magical creatures. There's a traveling troop um, the, called the Players. Um, so it's all of that kind of fun vibe, but there is very much kind of a dark overline. You know, the villains are very villainous in here and will hurt you. Um, so there's that kind of overlay. There also just generally just seems to be this kind of feeling of gloom in here as well. And the lightness inflicted doesn't quite balance it out for me. And I do like more of a balance in my middle grade series. But I did enjoy my time with it and um, it was nice to reread. And I really love the copies of the books I have. These are like the original UK ones where they look like old books. Okay, my final series was not one I was originally on. So when I last did my series about series, I said that um, I counted the realm of the elderlings as an unfinished series. Um, but I'm only going to count it within its series within the series. So Farsi trilogy I read, Live Ship Traders, Tawny Man, I'm just going to count those uh, series I'm reading or in the middle of rather than the series as a whole because it's so big. The same for looking at things like Mistborn. I'm not going to count the whole thing. It would be broken into Era 1 and Era 2. And the same with Discworld, putting them into individual series. But I did read The Live Ship Traders. So I started this in May and finished it at the end of August. And oh my goodness, was this series incredible. It is definitely one of my favourite series. I absolutely loved it so much but Robin Hobb absolutely tears your heartstrings she pulls you to pieces in this series um so ship of magic we have these live ships we have kind of a political situation going on in Bingtown where you have old traders which were the original settlers and then new traders have kind of come in and don't quite stick to the old traders ways in here and they started to bring the concept of slavery, which usually belonged in the Chalcedon slaves and in Jamila. And the old traders do not like this um, so much. Um, so old, not all the old traders, but most of them will have a live ship. So this is where you have a chip, ship, not a chip, for three generations. And the captain of that ship, be it male or female, dies on deck. Um, and then their life kind of is absorbed by the wood of the ship and then after three of those have occurred the ship will awaken and the figurehead will talk and it will know the family and know those memories and it will help you so it will it will help with the with the sailing um if you need it to um and will give you warnings about things and works with you as like an extra member of the crew so it's all kind of part together um but live ships come at a cost. You buy them from the mysterious Rain Wild people. They are made of wizard wood. Wizard wood also appears at other points to make other kind of charms and things. Um, and then has its own mystery of where does wizard wood come from. You also find out about a tangle of serpents. So we are unsure of the motivations of these serpents. We just hear some of them. They are trying to get from one place to another and they are looking for something. So they are very intriguing as well. We then have the human characters. Um, we follow the crew on board the Vivacia with um, Althea and Brashen and um, the ship's captain. And there is when that ship's captain is going to no longer be captaining, um, that causes um, causes concern um, with the family of the, the captain. 
Althea as the youngest daughter who was kind of like supposed to be inheriting the ship and has been sailing with them feels it should go to her. Her mother feels it should go to the eldest daughter to keep all of their family fortunes together. And um, her, the eldest daughter, Kefria's husband, Kyle, um, is Chalcedon and has very different opinions and ideas about most things. And I think it's safe to say we don't like him. We also meet the pirate, um, Kennet, who wishes to be king of the pirates and has his own agenda about what he wants to do things and is a intriguing character. People are very split about their opinions of him. And I'm not going to say anything more about this series. So it follows the, um, so the family of the ship, um, Vivacia, they're called the Vesterit. So it does follow the Vesterit family as well as other things kind of within this world as it goes on. And there are characters you kind of change your opinion about so much in this series. Um, you start loving characters and then can switch off them. You can start being intrigued by characters and kind of quite liking them and absolutely then end up not liking them at all. You can start by not liking characters and end up loving them. Like it absolutely takes you on a journey with this and it's very hard reading and you absolutely have to um, check for trigger warnings within here. But I loved it. I embraced the pain. Um, I think with the ending of the book, you can interpret it in different ways. And I definitely, it felt like it was never going to be quite the happy ending you wanted it to be. And uh, you kind of took the best you could from it. But just there's some of the characters here that I will just love. I think that's why I love it so much. Like there's characters in here that I will continue to love forever and just had the best time with and want all good things for them. I love the live ships. I really enjoyed the world. I enjoyed the mysteries and I'm interested to see how that will kind of add on to the realm of the elderly as a whole. Okay, so those are the ones that I finished. So let's look at the ones that I have made progress with. So the books that I have made progress with are The Stormlight Archive, Words of Radiance. The Chorus of Dragons, The Name of All Things, The Shades of Magic, The Gathering of Shadows, and my placeholder here, the Akatar series with A Court of Mist and Fury. So, let's start with my placeholder. So I read um, Akatar, and uh, I think it has consolidated that this series is not for me. I did not have fun with it, unless you count ranting as fun. Um, if you want to know all my full thoughts, I have a July video where I talk about my non-spoiler thoughts and also a video where I talk about my spoiler thoughts. So if you're interested to know what did or didn't work for me, you uh, can have a look at that. However, I will be continuing with this series because this is part of my chatty challenge where I am trying to read the most popular fantasy series over the last seven years according to Goodreads. And as A Court of Silver Flames is, one, is the winner for 2021, I want to read the series to get up to that point so I can compare it to other ones. <laughs> I think it's possibly, unless there's a big change around, safe to say it's not going to be one of my favourite series, but it's also nice to be able to give my opinions and give you all the receipts. There we go. Um, and again, now I'm having a sort of a mixed time with uh, The Shades of Magic by V. E. Schwab. So the first book, A Darker Shade of Magic, I was very split. There were lots of things I liked about it and there were lots of things that frustrated me because I felt it could have been so much more than what it was. One of the things I struggled with was that I felt there wasn't emotional depth to the characters as much. I felt there were possibilities where we could have really like interesting moments with the characters and we didn't get them. So now A Gathering of Shadows, it's giving me all of the character development that I need. I'm really enjoying the characters in this. I'm enjoying their relationships with each other. I'm enjoying how they have... Um, how they have reacted to the events that happened in the first book. Like we're actually getting a bit of grieving from some of the events. We're getting a bit of like confliction from some of the events. Um, and I'm really pleased to see um, some characters like pop back that I wanted more of. However, the plot with the four different Londons, pretty non-existent in this book. It was very much focused on Red London. And as fun as the trials was and kind of learning more about Red London was, you know, it was absolutely at the expense of White London and Grey London and Black London. We did not get to see them fairly at all. Um, 
And I just felt it was such a missed opportunity. What I was so excited for about these series was having these world hoppingness, having this mixture of things and seeing the different kind of cultures and things. And it just didn't deliver on that point. But I thought, well, maybe it will all happen in the third book. At the moment, I've paused the third book because I just got too angry with it and I haven't got back to it yet. So I intend to, because again, this is part of my Chatty's challenge. It was the, wasn't the winner because she's never won. But I think from when I changed it around and did the ones I wanted to read, I think it was the winner of 2016? I'm going to say 26. I think, when was this one? Was this 2015? Because then it would make, no, it can't be. It'd be 2017 because this one, because I started it in 2015. So yeah, it must be then. Yeah, this, this is 2016, so 2017. So yeah, a conjuring of like 1 2017 for me, or this one 2016 for me, I can't remember, but they were high in the list of popular books. So I do, I'm going to try and finish out the series. I just needed a break from it to calm down. So we'll see. On to happier times. So one is a reread and uh, in the intention to kind of get me to where I want to be. So I'm rereading the Stormlight Archive with these pretty editions. I have the US hardbacks in all of their beauty with their end pages and their embossed shard blades, which you can kind of see. There we go. And I then have these wonderful covers from, I can't remember the name of the place that does them, but I also got these wonderful covers, um, which I really love. They're so um, oh, and I'm loving reading Stormlight with these beautiful books, like just feeling, turning the pages in them and just, it's just such a wonderful reading experience. I just love, listen to the sound of that. I love that. I love that noise. Uh, so yes, anyway, having a great time rereading these gave me all the feels and the wonder that I had the first time reading this. Absolutely loved it. Love these characters. Love these worlds. Brandon Sanderson, absolute favourite author. Yes, definitely. I also read the novella Edge Dancer. Marvellous. Um, had a great time. I love Liv. Don't care what anyone else says. I think she's wonderful. So I had a great time with that. And I did start Oathbringer. I did start the third one. But there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to read. And this is Oathbringer. Oathbringer is not, you can see, there you go, like you can see my bookmarks in there. Um, Oathbringer is enormous. I tried to like tab it so that I could like read to certain points and kind of feel myself keep going. But that's not how I want to read Oathbringer. Oathbringer is one of my favourites. I loved it the first time I read it. So I want to just be in a place where I'm not worrying about other books that I'm going to be reading and just read Oathbringer. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Just enjoy being in this world and with these characters. And then I will get to the books I haven't read, which is Dawn Shard and Rhythm of War, which I'm so excited about, but I still haven't read them because I'm terrible. Okay, and another reread was the second book in the chorus of dragon series by jen lyons i think it's lyons but i sometimes say leons i'm not quite sure which way around i really should know by now but i don't the name of all things was a reread for me loved it was great to be back in this world again i really love the world building in this i love the characters in this um i think some people are split on this in the first one as to which one they prefer depending kind of what you're expecting but Ruin of Kings, the first book, and The Name of All Things, the second book, basically follow the story of two different protagonists in this world and then kind of mush them together. So the events that happened in the first book that we are aware of in this one, but we're following different characters in a completely different part of the world. Um, but the storytelling device is they're always talking in the present day about the past, and then we catch up to the present in like the last fifth of the book, and then that bit is kind of the story onwards. So Kieran from the first book meets Janelle from the second book, and they're having a chat in a bar, and Janelle tells her story. So we do have some Kieran in it and towards the end we get Kieran and some of the characters from the first book as well. But it was great fun and I really enjoyed this world. Which brought me to read the book that I had not read yet, which was Memory of Souls. <gasps> the Memory of Souls was my favourite so far. It was an absolute wild ride. So in this one you have still got that wonderful framing device where two characters are talking to each other in the present whilst talking stories back and forth. Um, so you follow a whole host of different characters in this one. We get characters that we love from The Name of All Things in here. We get characters that we love from The Ruins of Kings in here. And we get our two protagonists, plus um, 
another few core characters that stop start becoming the main characters in this and they all go on the journey together and it's amazing we get more of the mythological mythological figures we get more from the immortal race and kind of their story we get more from the gods and their kind of power struggle in here we get people's past lives i think that's one of the key things this is called the memory of souls so you've got people who live various different lives remembering their past lives and that they used to know each other in the past and it's so messy and wonderful and hilarious and i've had so much fun with this book i've adopted another book baby and there's some i just love how you don't quite know which side to be on and what the right thing to do is in here and just again the characters and the dialogue and the snarkasm i think that's a new word chaotic snarkasm is if that works for you that's the vibe of this book and it's incredible so that was four series i've progressed with six books read in all throughout that so now let's look at what series i have started so I started seven series this month, <laughs> but hey, we're just, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. Um, so I read She Who Became the Sun. I don't have the book, I borrowed it from the library, so this is my placeholder. Really enjoyed this. I believe it is um, part of a duology um, called the Radiant Empire series. I haven't heard, um, Shelley Parker Chang is not, there's been nothing for the publishers or anything about when we are due the second instalment and if it's just a duology or if it's going to be a trilogy but I'm eagerly awaiting it. Um, I really enjoyed this book. It is more like historical, um, sort of historical with magical realism. So there's not a huge amount of fantasy in it um, but I think the second book there could be. There was kind of hints of stuff kind of happening towards the end but yes really enjoyed that one. Um, we then have um, I read a graphic novel called, um, again, don't have this one because it's a library, The Sad Ghost Club. Um, I really enjoyed the graphic novel. It was really cute. I liked the way of depicting people who were depressed or anxious as ghosts with sheets over their heads. Um, I thought it was a very like, lovely way looking at mental health. Um, and I'm keen to read the next one, The Sad Ghost Club 2. So I have to see if I can get hold of it. I then did a reread. I read Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief um, because I wanted to reread this series this year. So I've read one so far. <laughs> Don't really know if I'm going to complete it by the end of the year, but we'll see. But again, very easy to read. It's a middle grade. I know it well. Um, the writing is very, very, very easy to read, basically. it's um, And it's kind of like it will work for you if you enjoy Percy's voice. If you find him annoying, it's probably not going to work for you. But I love the kind of mix of Greek gods with the um, present day. I love all of that. I enjoy the Camp Half-Blood. I enjoy all the, the kind of the magic around that. And it's just a real fun adventure. I then read a YA fantasy, Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. And I had a great time with this one as well. Again, the world building was great fun. I enjoyed the real fast paced feel to it. I enjoyed kind of the magic in here. Um, and I'm keen to see what happens next in this series. Um, I did enjoy the characters and um, yeah, I kind of want to know more of their journey. There's a lot of unanswered questions I have. Um, and so I'm looking forward to getting to book two. I read a romance, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which is the first book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. Um, and this was great. I absolutely love Tylee Hibbert's writing. It was so joyful and delightful whilst also looking at some serious issues in here as well. But the main couple in here are absolutely adorable. Um, so I can't wait to read more and then read about Chloe's sisters, Eve and Danny, or Danny and Eve, because it's that way around. I read The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which is the first book in the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. Absolutely love this. The level of galaxy building and planet building and races <laughs> blew my mind in here, like all the different alien races and how they came to be and how humans have kind of moved away from earth and sort of what happened but it is essentially just about this bunch of characters on this ship and it is very much kind of slice of space life which was delightful there was a lot of emotions in here there were some very dra dra dramatic intense moments as well and i can't wait to continue with the rest of the series in this one and finally i have read onyeka and the academy of the sun by tolo Okog Okoguru 
and this book I loved so much. It's such a wonderful middle grade and I can't wait to pick the second book up. Again, the magic system in here that they have, um, the school in Nigeria, the friendship group, the kind of the threat um, of the, uh, that I'm presuming is going to be for an overarching series. I hope it's a series. There is definitely a second book coming. I would love there to be quite a few because I'm having a great time in this world. And that leads me to um, books that I am up to date with now. So from this pile, it is just Rainbow Grey and the Eye of the Storm. So I am now up to date with the Fantastic Rainbow Grey series by Laura Ellen Anderson. And again, it's one of my favourite series. It's such a fun middle grade. Um, we follow Ray Grey. She has weather magic. Um, we have her friends here, we have Droplet Dewdrop and Snowden Everfreeze and we also have the wonderful fluffy cloud cat Nim and we follow what is happening in the Weatherlands with them. So in the first book we had um, Ray finding her rainbow magic and what that meant and learning about um, rogue weather weatherlings who create these storms and kind of challenge the weather magic on earth that the weatherlings are um, helping to protect. Um, in this book we have another mystery. Cloud, the little baby cloud creatures are kind of disappeared and um, cloud creatures are just generally disappearing. There is also a lot more prejudice to rainbow magic because it's not been seen for a really really long time. So Ray is struggling with kind of the animosity of some of the other members um, of the weather community and also trying to find out what has happened to these cloud creatures. There is a very beautiful emotional moment in here and I can't wait for the third book to come out um, so I can continue. So there are currently two books out in this series. There we go, let's put them right way around for you. Um, and the third book is due to come out February 2023. So let's, let's get pre-ordering for that book. I am very excited. So that's one series I'm up to date with. Another series I'm up to date with is Annika, because there's only one book out. The next book should come out in February 2023. And only a monster. The second book is due out in June 2023. And finally, She Who Became the Sun. I've no idea when the next book is due out, but I'm up to date for now. So let's go and see my up to date list. So here we go, Legendborn, Guardians of Magic, Bands of Mourning. Once We Are Were Witches by Sarah Driver, book two has now come out. It came out in September. So Once We Were Witches now needs to go on my series in progress pile. I'm no longer up to date. But I can add in She Who Became the Sun, Only a Monster, Onyeka and the Academy of the Sun, and Rainbow Grey. Um, so I have now seven series I am up to date with. And let's look at the series I am currently reading. I now need to read the second book in the Wayfarers series, the second book in the Brown Sisters series. I need to read A Court of Mist and uh, of Court of Wings and Ruin in the Akatar series. I need to read um the second book in the Sad Ghost Club series. I need to read A Conjuring of Light, the final book in the Shade of Magic series. I need to read, please don't crash, Oathbringer, the third book in the Stormlight Archive. I need to read Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters, which is the second book in the Percy Jackson series. And I need to read The House of Always, which is the fourth book in the Chorus of Dragon series. So that should, if I have calculated this correctly, be, again, 18 books. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I've got nineteen. Why have I got nineteen? Oh well, I'll work it out shortly. Yeah, I know why there's nineteen, because I forgot to include once we were witches while I was originally working it out. So there we go, nineteen. So I'm just gonna recalculate all my stuff. So to summarize. I finished four books in this third, progress, sorry, finished four series within this third, progressed with four series, started seven series, and became up to date with four series. 
Um, so I now have seven series I'm up to date on and 19, not 18 series that I'm currently in the process of reading. Um, so this now, if I'm going to give myself a little bit of stats, means that since the start of the year, I've got eight books finished in total. So that's four. That's a plus four. I am up to uh, I am up to date with seven books. So that is a plus three from um, my previous third. And I'm working on 19, not 18, which gives me a minus one that I need to take into the equation. No, yes, not minus one that I need to take into the equation. So the total is plus three, four plus three is seven. Take away what I know. Yeah, I'll get there, hold on. Four plus three for the scores, minus one gives me six, but minus three plus seven. So on April, I was had minus three. I said it's six now. Oh, I hope you're nicely confused. Maybe just stop watching because this is just all crazy. April, I had minus three points. August, I have plus six points, which gives me the total of plus three points. So I'm now on a plus three for my series. So that is a very happy place to be. Admittedly, it probably is due to cheating and reading the first book in a series that have not had any more books published in them. Uh, I think that's definitely helped me. Um, I could do a better scoring system with depending how many books are in series and I'm not giving myself really any points for progression. But it's, you know, it'll do for now. Maybe I'll perfect that for next year. So that's where I am with my series. I hope you enjoyed the chaos of this video. Please chat to me down below about any of your series. Any thoughts on these series? I always love a chat. And if you have enjoyed this, if you've got this fine, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a little like. And if you haven't got anything to say, just do a big stack of books. Happy reading, everyone.